Hey guys, it's Drew with Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we'll be talking about a collection that we picked up that kind of caught us off guard. We hope you guys enjoy today's video. So shout out to Chris, Sandy, and Brandon for letting us come into their home, view these coins, be able to pick up these coins and offer them to you guys. And something that was interesting about this is that we've known Sandy, Chris, and Brandon for years and years and years. We used to go to church with them. And my parents and Chris and Sandy ended up going out to eat one of these nights. And they said, hey, we've been seeing Drew post a lot on Facebook and seeing a few of his YouTube videos about coins. And so what had happened was they said, hey, maybe we can schedule a time for you to come over and take a look at our coin collection. And most of the time when you're talking about a coin collection, you're thinking, oh, they have a few proof sets, a few mint sets. They have a few silver dollars that their parents took out of cash registers or they exchanged them at the bank and they put them in a little pouch. And I thought the same until I asked Chris to send me a photo of what he had. And the reason why we kind of do this is something that is a little bit easier for us to figure out is because. Because when you're walking into a situation, you want to be able to give them the best answer, the best number for uh, why you're paying for something and kind of the, you know, what's next. Sometimes people ask about the coins and the prices of the coins and why you're paying that. And then we just give them the numbers that we end up selling them for most times. And then we come to a deal. And so I told Chris last night, I said, hey, send the photo over. He forgot, which was OK. And so I gave him a general reminder before our meeting today to send me the photo. He sent me the photo and I was blown away because most people don't have this much numismatic slash silver and gold in their collection, in their safe. And I can't wait to show you guys exactly what he was uh, able to give us and show us today. And so let me just give you guys a quick rundown real quick. He ended up giving us 500 Kennedy half dollars that were 40% silver. He ended up giving us 20 BU Morgan dollars that are all graded by NGC. And then he gave us a lot of gold. And so we were able to get all these for an affordable price and be able to offer them to you guys. But something that I learned that was pretty interesting is that don't judge a book by its cover in any home that you go into. Sometimes you go there and you're looking to help out somebody, educate them on the hobby. And sometimes you walk out of the house and you don't really make anything. You maybe make a good word of mouth so they can pass it on to somebody that might need your help next. A good story for this is that my dad was talking to someone at a garage sale and at the garage sale, they said, we've been putting back silver half dollars and silver dollars and silver dimes for years and years and years. My dad did it and I want you to come over. I want you to make an offer for me. And we ended up going over there and they didn't have any silver half dollars. It was like four or five out of probably a few hundred that were silver. And then we had a few silver dimes. And so we ended up spending, I think, like 50 bucks or something. Nothing crazy at the time. And But what we were able to do was give good word of mouth to them, tell them that we're honest, good people, willing to look at anything, willing to step into any home and help them out with their coin collection because that's what you need. You need people that are honest, down to earth, and willing to give their time and effort to this hobby. With this situation, we were able to go into the home, not only educate Chris and the family, about coins, but we were also able to buy coins from them so they can use that money for a different vehicle that they felt was more worthy at the time. And that sounds like a good trade-off for both of us. And so we hope you guys enjoy what we have to show you today. Let's show you right now. So the first thing we want to show you guys are these 40% Kennedy halves. So like we said, there's about 500 in this canvas bag. And what I'm guessing is that Chris bought these all at the same time in the 90s. And then he ended up wanting to sell them to us today. And so he ended up getting a decent, you know, return on his investment, which a lot of people need, but they have to give it a certain amount of time for it to, for it to happen. A lot of these are AU or BU. And I think that what he did was he ended up buying from this place called Goldline. And Goldline is basically a big distributor for people that want to invest in gold and silver. And so I think that's where the 500 Kennedy halves came from. These Morgan dollars came from because there's 20 of them to be exact. So I think they were selling him a graded roll of Morgan dollars. And then they were also selling him some libs and some saints that we can't wait to show you guys. And so let's move this tray out of the way. And let's bring in the first tray of Morgan dollars. So these are all the old NGC holders that are all 
kind of one piece, and they're the thick ones. A lot of these are really nice, PQ, gorgeous, luster, just fantastic coins. I think most of these were green cac, some possibly gold, but really nice color on the rim, gorgeous luster, just cream of the crop coins. People still love these holders today, and they actually rose a little bit in premium because they're a little bit more collectible, which is cool. I'm not going to show you all these Morgan dollars today because I just want to give you guys a nice quick glimpse of everything, but all just outstanding coins. All have decent luster and the rim filled in really nice with some blues and some rainbows on some of these. And so this is 10 of them. And he also has another 10 and they're all old NGC fatties as well. So when you pull these over there, we got some more with some gorgeous color. The cheek is really nice on most of these coins. There's a few kind of abrasions out in the field most times, but that's okay. And so offering coins like this with great eye appeal, nice little kind of character to the coin is always good. Here's this 1899O with some color. And these cheeks are actually pretty clean when you look at them. You know, Morgan Dollars, when they have all those hits on the cheek, sometimes collectors don't get really, you know, they don't get behind those as much as they look for when they see it, see a Morgan Dollar cheek that looks like this. And so definitely a nice group of 20 Morgan dollars that were all graded and they're all sent to him by gold line. I left these stickers on there because they might be a little piece of numismatic history. He bought these all in the nineties. And so people might think they're interesting to keep in their collection. If they were to buy them. Now let's show you guys the cool stuff, the stuff that's the real money, which is the saints and the libs. And we also bought some raw ones also. So when I was taking a look at these, they're also nice in quality. I think NGC was a little bit more strict back then on the grading. When you're looking at the fields on these 20s, I mean, they're pretty nice. They, they, uh, I think borderline 64 plus, maybe 65 by today's standards. But most of the time when we buy Saints, we want to move them and get back to cash because we like to buy more numismatic coins. I know these are 64s and they're Saints, but there's a lot of other coins we're very passionate about, which is you know, cheaper type coins and things that may come across our lap like other graded coins. And so these do take up a lot of capital, but people do love saints and lives a lot. Just take a look at this luster on this coin and how Mark Fried is. I love buying PQ coins like this that are really close to the next grade because it really gives a collector a, a nice value. A lot of times we don't crack out coins that have a really nice look to them. Just because, like I said, you can provide more value to a customer and they really start to like your eye for coins and they'll come back and buy from you again and again. We had somebody buy some coins today and they say, hey, I love the coins that you pick and that's why I buy from you. So that was a very nice compliment by them. We have some libs up here at the top. We have this nice 1900. A lot of these have toning spots on them and the cheek is pretty beat up, which you see on most libs, but that's okay. Just decent coins overall. Nothing too crazy. And here's a nice 1907. Great in Mint State 63. And this might annoy some people, but these are circulated. This is AU. This is XF AU. These are XF. And wouldn't it be cool if you just put all these coins together and you're just walking around with them, just, just holding a little piece of history, because that's what a lot of people did back then. And these coins are really neat just to feel in your hands, understand as a collector or as a coin dealer. And uh, I really do like just the feel of these coins. I can understand why people buy graded coins these days. And so, or graded and raw coins, but raw coins especially because they just get to feel them and understand the true weight of them. And so, thank you guys for taking a look at these gold coins and the dollars and the Kennedys. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on everything we had to speak about today. And subscribe. We're coming out with videos every single week. And we're so thankful that you guys are a part. We'll see you guys in the next video.